Hey, hey, hey. So David is the head of trends and insights, and he will show you how they actually find trends. And uh, he um, told me last night that by the end of his presentation, you will no not need him anymore because you, will can, you can do it yourself. So good, good luck. Thank you, thank you, what a lovely introduction. So just as you heard, my name is David, I'm from Trend Watching. Our obsession is consumer trends with where consumerism is heading. And usually when I speak to audiences like you guys, is to say, okay, here's five trends, here's 10 trends, here's you know, trends that I think are really relevant for you. Today I want to do something, as you've heard, uh, even more exciting, okay? Because today I want to ask how can I empower you guys to become your own trend watchers? Okay, how can I empower you to go off into the world, spot your own trends that will give you really powerful insight into what you should do next, okay? What product you should build next, what campaign you should do next, what service, whatever you do, what you should do next. Because if I can do that, as you've heard, right, you can forget all about me, <laughs> and you are then empowered to spot your own trends and innovate accordingly. I know I'm speaking to an audience of innovators, but my aim is is that after this 20 minutes, which is very fast, right, 20 minutes, um, you will be trend-driven innovators. Okay, that's my aim. Um, before that, I want to start with a really quick exercise. You can see it behind you. I just love you to put your hands up and keep them up if you use Uber. Put your hands up and keep them up if you use Uber. Of course, I expect lots of you do. Okay, now keep your hands up. Keep your hands up, please, if you use Uber. Now, just this is a little thought experiment. Okay, you're on the street, you book an Uber, and the Uber tells you it's going to be two minutes to arrive. Who would be happy to wait? Keep your hands up if you'd be happy to wait. Who'd be happy to wait five minutes? Who'd be happy to wait eight minutes? Okay, see hands, wow, hands going down. Anyone happy to wait 10 minutes? Okay, amazing, they've all gone down already. Now think about that, okay? Most hands went down at eight minutes. Uh, way back in the day, ancient history before Uber, if you'd booked yourself a taxi and the guy had said, I'll be there in eight minutes, right? You probably wouldn't have been ready. It would have been too soon. Okay, so it feels like Uber has changed something about the way you think when it comes to transport. And actually, you guys are not alone. This is a really interesting graph put out by Uber not so long ago. What it shows is that the longer Uber was operating in this particular city, the less willing people were to wait for a ride. Okay? And in fact, Uber ran this experiment in then multiple cities, and the result was always the same. Okay? The longer Uber has been operating in a city, the less willing people are to wait for a ride, the less patient they are. So it just feels as though Uber is changing the way people think about transport as a service, changing, you might say, what people expect, what customers expect when it comes to transport. Okay? Now, I would just love you to take that little thought and hold it. Just hold that thought, because that little experiment about Uber and the way it changes what people expect gets to the heart of everything that I want to tell you today. Okay? So hold that thought. But back to me really quickly. So I'm from Trend Watching, as you've heard. Uh, founded way, way back in 2002. You heard a bit of our history, okay? We, uh, we have a freemium model. We publish lots of free content. We have an amazing subscriber list, and then we carve out of that a really cool client list. And we're just known for spotting trend after trend after trend, okay? And, and, and telling the world about them. That's what we love to do. But last year, we decided to do something kind of crazy, something a bit different. We thought, OK, of course, we're, we're going to keep doing the trends forever. We love spotting trends, but we want to think now about our methodology. OK, we want to think now about what are trends? Where do they come from? How do we spot them? How do we, how do we you know, get our clients to use them? And the way we're going to do this is we're going to write a book. OK, we're going to write a book in like, in like three months. That's, that's literally how quick it was. Um, we want it. We've been doing this for years. Let's come to it with beginner's mind and think about our methodology end to end with a new clarity. Okay. Now, of course, we don't have time today to go into all of that. No one's got time for that today. Like I've literally got 15 minutes left. So today, I just want to share with you the one key secret. Okay, the heart of the book. Like if my friend said to me, David, I'm on my deathbed. I have like 15 minutes left to live. I'm so sorry I haven't read your book. Please. Tell me about your book. This is what I would tell him in the, in the remaining 15 minutes, okay? And it starts here, okay? This is where it all starts. This is where my story starts. This is my 
metaphor for the business arena today, because the business arena today just feels like this avalanche of new products, new services, new campaigns, just flooding onto the market constantly. And as innovators, okay, as business people, it is just very hard to orient yourself in that avalanche, let alone you know, think about what it really means and think about what you're going to do next. But amid that avalanche, Okay, business boils down to one pretty simple question, and that question is, what will my customers want next? Okay, what are people going to want next? Um, it's a very big question, well-established question, so it's no surprise there are some, some pretty big answers to it. You know, the traditional answer is, okay, we'll ask people. We'll use traditional market research, but we all know, and other innovators have said famously, that in an environment of very rapid change, People don't always really know what they want until you show it to them. So asking people what they want is not always that effective. So then you say, okay, forget asking people. We'll watch people. We'll use ethnographic research, you know, field work. But we all know that's very expensive. Okay, it's time-consuming. So that's difficult. And then there's the answer that lots of us these days are excited about. Okay, there's big data. We go, yeah, like we've got this crazy amount of customer data now. We're going to use that customer data to get insights on our customers, and we'll act accordingly on that. Yes, of course, data can deliver you great insights. But my experience of talking to clients is that data is better at just refining something you're already doing rather than giving you that massive breakthrough insight that leads to something truly new. Okay? So we have a problem. How can we answer this question, what will my customers want next? Well, ripping our methodology apart and putting it back together for this book, um, we realize, yes, we do have an answer to that question. Okay? It's not about just asking people. It's not about ethnographic research. It's not about data. It's about saying, if you want to have actionable foresight, if you want to know where your customers are heading next, start watching innovations. Start looking at the innovations that are flooding onto the market today, Okay, the new products, the new services, the new campaign. So if you, that sounds counterintuitive, because what I'm saying to you is if you want to understand your customers better, Stop looking at your customers and start looking at innovations. Now, how can that be true? Well, the reason it's true all comes back to the new expectations that these innovations that I'm asking you to look at create. Okay, it's all about new expectations. And to understand that, it will pay for me to just take a step back and talk to you a bit about what a consumer trend is. Okay, and you can see this definition here. A consumer trend is a new manifestation among people of a basic human need or want. Now, there's a lot going on even in that. So I'll just take a step back even further and run you through our model of how new consumer trends emerge. Okay, how do new consumer trends emerge, come about? We have a model that says, on the one hand, there's change. Okay? The world is changing all the time. Technological change, social change, attitudinal change. We live with very rapid change. We're used to that. On the other hand, okay, there's human nature, which fundamentally does not change that much over time. So human beings are motivated by this basic set of needs and wants. You know, safety, value, love, excitement, connection, whatever it is, they're pretty stable over time. They do not change that much over time. Now, at heart, our model of how consumer trends emerge simply says new trends emerge when external change unlocks some new way of serving a basic human need. Okay, when something changes that allows us to serve a basic human need in a new way, that's when trends emerge. And crucially, you can see that happening when you look at innovations and you ask yourself, how is this innovation serving a basic human need in a new way? Like, if you rewind way back into ancient history, and you think about so the, the basic human need that is social connection. And when I say way back into ancient history, I mean like the early 2000s. Okay? <laughs> think about the basic human need that is social connection, right? And you think about the way an external change at that time, which was the internet, unlocked a new way of serving that basic human need that is social connection. Now, if you'd been looking at the very early social platforms, I mean, before Facebook, before MySpace, all of that, and if you looked at those platforms and you said, aha, 
These innovations are, are leveraging an external change called the internet to serve a basic human need, social connection, in a new way. If you'd had that thought by looking at those innovations, you could have spotted the trend that then became social media, okay? which of course now is not a trend, now is just daily life. But that's how watching innovations helps you spot consumer trends, because new trends emerge when innovators address basic human needs in new ways. Okay? Now, the reason that innovations that address a basic human need in a new way create trends is because innovations that serve a basic human need in a new way change what customers expect. Okay? They create new customer expectations. So that's what trend watching is all about. We're looking for those innovations that create new customer expectations. And once new customer expectations are created, they spread. That is the crucial thing. They spread across national borders, they spread across demographics, they spread across industries, and that wave of new expectations spreading through those borders, okay, that's what a trend is. And that's what tracking trends is all about. Tracking trends is all about, the reason you guys are here, a lot of you, is all about understanding what customers expect, being ahead of that curve so that you can innovate to surpass those expectations. So I want to show you really quickly uh, just an example of expectation transfer in action. So this is an example of exactly what I mean. This is an example of the way expectations spread. Okay, we looked at Uber. We saw how it was changing the expectations of customers when it comes to transport. Even in this audience, right, we saw the way it's changed, what you guys expect. In fact, Uber has created this amazing new expectation of one-touch service. Okay, open that smartphone, touch a button, a car is at your feet in minutes. Okay, it's created this new expectation of one-touch service. Just look at how that new expectation has spread around the world. So this is the, this is the Darty button. This is a, Darty is a consumer electronics company in France, okay? This is a little button like this. You stick it on your fridge or your washing machine, whatever it is. You press the button, you get an instant callback from Darty customer services. So if something breaks down, you just press this button, get an instant callback. So one touch customer service for consumer electronics. We all know this, right? The Amazon Dash buttons. This is one touch for retail, okay? Stick these buttons anywhere, press the button, nappy, soap, razors, whatever it is. One touch for online retail. This is Gojek. This is like the Uber of Ojek motorcycle taxis in Indonesia. But just look how they've layered on all these new one-touch services, like touch for cleaning your house, touch for getting a massage, like lifestyle, makeup, whatever. They understand the way the expectation of one-touch service is spreading. And this is a bar in London. Okay, yes. <laughs> one touch for champagne. Now, of course, that is frivolous, okay, but it's tapping into something more serious, okay, which is this expectation that Uber helped create of one touch service. That is a trend that spread around the world, that spread across industries, that spread across markets, across demographics. That is expectation transfer in action. And it's a pretty scary thing for people like you, for innovators, okay, because it should really lead you to the question. Who am I competing against? It's not necessarily the other people in your industry. It's not necessarily the people either side of you geographically. It is those innovations that are creating the new expectations, the new customer expectations that you will eventually face. Okay, and that is why, I'm coming back to my core point now, that is why watching innovations and asking how do these innovations change what customers expect is such a powerful way of answering the question, what will my customers want next? Okay, you need to look out there into the world, look at the innovations, ask yourself, how are these innovations changing what customers expect? And how is that going to affect me? Okay, that's what we do all the time. That's why we're fueled by this. This is our spotting network. It's a network of thousands of people all around the world, just like you, sending us game-changing innovations from their markets all the time. Okay? And that's the reason why when we see an innovation like this, this is super fast, three trends in like one minute. I'm going to do a little interlude here. When we see an innovation like this and others like it, okay, this is an app from Sweden that uses artificial intelligence to predict train delays before they occur. Okay, now, when we, it was launched last year, when 
we see an innovation like this, and others like it too, we draw the lines between them, we come up with a trend like this that we recently published. This is beneficial intelligence. This is a trend that says simply, customers will now expect brands, businesses, startups, guys like you, okay, to use artificial intelligence to deliver them things they really want. When we see an innovation like this, this is REI in the United States. They closed their, all their stores, 140 stores, on um, Black Friday on, in October last year because Black Friday, the orgy of consumerism, the ugly scenes just doesn't align with their brand. Okay? So instead, they said, we're going to close all our stores, we're going to do something good for our people, we're going to give them a paid day off. Okay, when we see innovations like this and others like it, it leads us to a trend like this. This is insider trading. It says, do good things for your people, do good things for your processes internally, and tell the world about them, because consumers now expect you to, be, to have values that align with theirs and have an organization and a process that aligns with their values. Okay, and last, when we see innovations like this, this is Ren Ren Zhang. This is a noodle bar in Beijing that has no front of house staff, no waiters, nothing like that. The entire interaction with the bar comes through um, WeChat. So you order through WeChat, you pay through WeChat, everything. When we see innovations like that, we come with trends like this. This is informal info that says consumers will now expect you to speak their own digital language where they're speaking it, okay? If that's in a messaging app or a chat bot or whatever. So that is how we spot trends. We look at innovations and we ask ourselves, how are these innovations changing what customers expect? Okay, I'm getting close. I'm going to wrap up pretty soon. Uh, maybe you have one question. The question is, you're telling me to look at innovations and analyze them for new customer expectations. What if the innovations I look at fail? I don't want to look at innovations that fail and, uh, and, and think about how they're creating new customer expectations, do I? Yes, you do, okay? If you're asking yourself that question, it means the message that it's all about expectations still has not sunk in, okay? Just a really, really quick story about that. This is the black phone. This is a phone that's all about end-to-end -end encryption, total data security, okay? This is the fair phone. This is a phone that's all about ethics and sustainability, conflict-free minerals, the workers are paid a fair wage, all of that, okay? This is Project Aura. This is Google's project to build the world's first modular smartphone. Okay, now, am I saying that any of those three smartphones are going to outsell Apple, are going to outsell Samsung next year? No, I am not, okay? The key thing is that the expectations they create are going to be in everyone's head next year. In fact, they're starting to be in everyone's head now. And don't forget, consumers don't have to buy those phones. They just have to see them, like you guys have now seen them, to have their expectations changed. And the big players know these expectations are coming down the pipeline. Okay, what did we see Apple do in February of last year with iOS 9? Okay, they massively beefed up, beefed up their encryption. Okay, they're also looking at sustainability and ethics in their supply chain. We see Samsung like doing a patent for the world's first modular smartphone camera. So they are responding to the expectations that those innovations are creating. Okay, it's not about the fact that they're, gonna, they're, they're not going to sell a ton. Okay, it's about the expectations they are creating. And the expectation onslaught never stops. Like, this is the world's first waterproof smartphone. You can wash this phone with soap and water for you germ phobes out there. Um, this is the world's first smartphone with a 360 camera. Okay, so the expectation onslaught never stops. So I'm wrapping up, right? There we have it. We started off by saying business arena is this constant onslaught of new products, new services, and new campaigns that's totally overwhelming. If you take that onslaught and you look at those innovations through this very powerful lens of customer expectations, you ask yourself, how are these innovations changing what customers expect? Then that onslaught becomes deeply empowering because you can use that onslaught of innovations to spot trend after trend after trend, okay? And pretty soon, it becomes a new way of seeing the world. It just becomes a habit. Like, you guys are gonna see a ton of innovations the next couple of days. Please use this new way of seeing the world. It will really increase the power massively of the innovations, the stuff this conference is showing you. Of course, then you have to apply trends, okay? Just spotting them is not enough. That's in the book too. And if you do that, you can create the next trend-driven product, the service, campaign, whatever you guys do, and start to fuel the next trend yourself, and then you really are a trend-driven innovator, okay, which is, which is my aim for you. Uh, but that's more than enough for me for now, so thank you so much for listening. It's been really fun. Thank you. Thank you.